Europe has been enforcing their new Digital Service Act laws that are going to criminalize even more speech in an even more arbitrary and bureaucratic way, as everybody was clamoring for. I, I, I know in the office, I was just thinking to myself, God, if only Europe could enforce more speech laws. I can't wait. I, I was just disgusted at how free the Germans are. <laughs> Unbearable, the amount of freedom I know. they have. I know. It's absolutely terrible. Germany, you should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, I'll get into it in a moment, but we've got videos on the website. As always, this is one that you did with Josh on Josh's series Contemplations, talking about the paradox of uh, tolerance, uh, which was Karl Popper's idea, which has been represented and misrepresented and then represented and misrepresented constantly in online discussions, mainly from two memes which I've seen, which combat one another on Twitter posts. And I've not read Open Society and its enemies. I own it, but it's a very big book, and I don't have time to read all of that. So explain it to me properly, Stelios. Uh, we, we need we need uh, more time for this, but definitely give this uh, conversation a watch. And we're talking about uh, the idea that you know there is a sort of paradox of tolerance that if you are supposed to be tolerant, you have to tolerate the intolerant. But uh, we are talking about how this isn't so much really a paradox, and th- that. You can definitely make a case for drawing the line somewhere and saying that there are some things that you will not tolerate. Because a lot of the times, a lot of the questions are phrased in an either or manner, either 100% tolerance or 0% tolerance. If you phrase it in terms of degrees, you you have completely different answers. You could say that, well, there is a level of toleration that is desirable for a society, but there are some very clear cut limits. Well, whenever I've seen the memes trotted out online, it always seems to be in favor of supporting leftist repressive tolerance. The more Marcusean idea of, I have defined you as the bad guy, and given that you have now been designated the bad guy, I have the right to treat you like the bad guy and yeah, punch you in the face yeah. and tell you that you're not allowed to say things. So that's the way I always see it trotted out. You seem to have a thought on this? No, well, who could argue with that? I know. Who who could argue, Callum? Well, no, not you, actually, because I've designated you the bad guy. Fair enough. And therefore... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, on repressive tolerance, well, that just seems to be exactly what the latest Orwellian internet censorship regime is, as, de- as stated by the European Conservative. Now, this all passed. I don't know if we've already spoken about it in any great detail, but it all passed back in August, or at least this bill went into effect on August 25th. And I'll read some of this article just to give you an idea of what it covers, what, how it's implemented, and then I'll give you some examples of how, in the interests of defending people from disinformation and misinformation online as coming out of the Israel-Palestine conflict, because if there's one thing that we can be sure of, despite the fog of war and the fact that every single take I see on Israel-Palestine coming from the online circles is contradictory to one another, because honestly, you could, for most people in the West, you could probably take a video of two vaguely brown looking men in a desert fighting one another and point to it and say, this is what's going on in Gaza right now. And it doesn't have to be from now, doesn't have to be from the area that they say it is. Most people won't know the difference because it's just a lot of online information. There's a lot of visual and informational noise. Despite that, I know that our overlords in the European Union and the European Commission can designate exactly what is honest, what is false, what is correct information, and what is misinformation, and regulate it accordingly. Uh, do you trust our benevolent overlords to do no, such a thing? I no, and I did a segment I know, I do about I... this, and you, you were with me. No, um, I trust them implicitly. <laughs> yeah. So, I, know, I know for yeah, one I, person, I don't trust only has my best intentions in mind. Yeah, Thank I'm you. sure. Thank you, EU. So, and not only her, but also Thierry Breton, who I, yeah, he's the one he who was wasn't elected things. by anyone, M- but somehow he, he talks about you know what should democratic be said values. and what shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, democratic values as given to you by unelected bureaucrats. Yeah. Don't you love the modern world? August twenty fifth, the Digital Service Act for the European Union, which passed last year, came into force. Among other things, it obliges large inf- online platforms to swiftly take down illegal content, hate speech, and so-called disinformation aiming in the words of the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen to ensure that the online environment remains a safe space, to make sure that we have a nice big hug box 
for everybody who might feel remotely slighted, and we can have care blankets at ready for everybody. But not safe for the natives. No, no, of course not. Well, we'll get into that. <laughs> Very large online platforms, which we will abbreviate here to VLOPs, with uh, more than 45 million monthly active users must abide by the rules from the Friday passing from the August 25th. Smaller platforms have until February to comply. So this will eventually fall under everybody, just not quite yet. What do you mean by that? Like it, it'll fall under all companies or outside the EU as well? It's probably just vague enough. Well, not outside of the EU, but yet. if all of these organizations begin to implement compliance departments so that they're able to comply with the EU laws, it will de facto be the same compliance for everybody else oh, as well. God. What do you want to bet as well? The people at Facebook, Twitter, etc. Not to be too rude, we probably can't even remember that the UK's left the EU and we'll just make the European department and just put us all in. Probably. Well, I know that I have my own criticisms of him, but Elon Musk will probably and, and is already kind of being a bit coy about trying to comply with this. But you, know, you know for a fact that somebody like Mark Zuckerberg and other big tech organi- uh, big tech company heads are going to be falling head over heels in their, de- in their desire to show how much and how willing they are to comply with these sorts of regulations because they desperately want to be able to comply with this sort of censorship, really. Designated by the commission back in April, the 19 VLOPs include all the big names, Google, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, slash X, YouTube, and Amazon, as well as smaller fries. <laughs> Imagine getting designated smaller fry, like Wikipedia, LinkedIn, and Snapchat. VLOPs will fund a permanent European Commission task force on disinformation of some uh, 230 staff paying an annual supervisory fee of up to 0.05% of their revenue, which given the size of these organizations, will still be a lot of money. And don't, don't you love that, that we have a task force dedicated to basically censoring your platform, and you've yeah. got to pay for it. Mexico has to build, we have to get, uh, get the money from Mexico to build the wall. Um, VLOPs must also publish an annual risk assessment due on Friday and act diligently to remove unapproved content. If VLOPs fail to comply with these dictates, they can be fined up to 6% of their annual global revenue, which is not anything to be sniffed at. Or they can be subjected to an investigation by the commission and potentially even be prevented from operating in the EU altogether. Which for something like Twitter, might be a more attractive proposal, given that Elon has said that he wants to be able to have it as being a free speech platform. Interesting as well that all of this passed after he purchased it and said that he wanted it to be a free speech platform, yada, yada, yada. In June, EU Digital Commissioner Stelios' favorite, Thierry Breton, who <sighs> dubbed himself the Enforcer, far too cool a name for a bespectacled bureaucrat, traveled to Silicon Valley to ram the point home. He met with Elon Musk to stress test DSA compliance, as well as other tech bosses, including uh, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Once again, a lot of these people are probably going to be falling over themselves to comply. Imagine being in on a meeting where they have their names and tags. Imagine having, you know, enforcer under your name. Except except you're a you're an EU bureaucrat. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just it does it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, he he does strike me as the kind of person who would do it somehow. He would like love to have the enforcer under his name. He like imagine a tag or something. When he looks in the mirror, he sees Terminator Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, no. On top of this day-to-day censorship, the DSA has a built-in crisis management mechanism whereby in terms of extraordinary crisis, the commission can immediately oblige platforms to remove content. A p- crisis is defined as an objective risk of serious prejudice to public security or public health in the union or significant parts thereof. So it's just a a, a regime-proved kill switch. You have said you've got something on your platform or a subject is being spoken about on your platform the regime does not approve of. Shut it down. Shut it down. Like that. <laughs> well, that's the, the enforcer there. Yeah, that's got his own little microphone. <laughs> that's the enforcer on his little walkie-talkie to Mark Zuckerberg. Shut it down. That's exactly how it's Someone is saying something bad about the EU. (laughs) Last year's Strengthened Code of Practice on Disinformation defines disinformation as false or misleading content that spread with an intent to deceive or secure economic or political gain, which may cause public harm. Nice, big, vague, gray terms that anybody can use post hoc for anything that they want it to mean. European Digital Media Observatory 
an EU-funded fact-checking hub. So we, we have the Stasi enforcers of the European Union, the Digital Ministry of Truth right here, which aim to identify disinformation, uproot sources, or dilute its impact. Uh, claims to be independent and impartial, because they all do, is essentially the EU's answer to Big Brother, according to the European Conservative. Launched by the Commission in June 2020 with a budget of 13.5 million euros to be expanded exponentially as and when needed, I'm sure, it compiles reports on internet discourse across the EU. These include regular fact-checking briefs, disinformation reports for specific countries, and early warnings on predicted disinformation trends. The better to pre-bunk them. Oh boy, are you ready to be pre-bunked, boys? <laughs> Never mind being debunked. You're going to get pre-bunked. You're going to get pre-bunked. And <laughs> it's getting weirdly sexual. Do about it. It, it, it honestly <laughs> does. It is like bend over for the EU digital ministry. The enforcer truth. is going to ram himself in and get debunked you. Yep. No <laughs> yeah. lube. Um, yeah, the, it's the process of exposing lies before they strike. So they're saying they can they can read your soul. They can read yeah. your mind. I can see that if you're you're planning on spreading misinformation, aren't you? You're I mean, planning on the, disinforming people, yeah. aren't you? I mean, this is a digital <laughs> manifestation of of identity politics because it, it's there are some people who are wrong by default. It's it's, it's hilarious. So that, I, that's exactly it. I hate you to say it. if you are uh, if you are a member of a certain demographic, for instance, you're by default wrong. Yeah, if, if you're. Uh. If you're a native of a European country, yeah. sticking up your own about identity the... using facts relating to that, yeah. uh, well, I'm sorry that you need you need to be pre-bunked harshly and with serious effectiveness. Yeah. This I, I don't mean to use cliches, but it really is. You're hiding disinformation under your floorboards, aren't you? In, in, really in this skull, this in is. this little skull of yours. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> then you have nothing to hide, sir. Leave my crab statistics alone. <laughs> no. Oh no. Uh, it's 2023 briefing on disinformation in Ireland. So this is an example the European Commission, uh, the European Conservative, highlighted here. Um, has uh, the the EDMO monitors 12 online platforms in Ireland on a regular basis, both mainstream platforms like Twitter, WhatsApp, and YouTube, and the less restricted platforms like Getter, Telegram, and Odyssey. The briefing lists numerous disinformation trends it's observed in Ireland, which are said to cause harm. These include, can I, can, before I actually list them out, do you want to give a guess? So there's three of them. I can. Of these break the YouTube terms of service? Um... I, uh, as, as long as you're nice and vague and general about how you describe them. Oh, good. <laughs> well, are you going uh, to give it a guess? Uh, I'll go. Let's have I, some fun here. I've got to figure out how to word it when I get back. The, the world is collapsing. We might as well do it with mm. a smile on our face. Do they think the elections are a good thing? Is that uh, no, that's not, that, that's, that's, not one of the, that's not one of the three that's listed here. Do you even know what I'm talking about at that point? I know exactly what you're talking about perfect. there. You're talking about how every single American election has it's been perfect. Is perfect yeah. No corruption ever in the history of that's America. That's not listed, okay. Not that's, not, that's not one of the examples. Criticizing the EU? Is that disinformation? Uh, probably. I mean, whatever's dis disinformation is whatever they say it is. No, what's listed here is nativist narratives. That will be criticism of the EU, though. Which uh, oppose migration, such as the hashtag Ireland is full. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or the slogan "Make Ireland Safe," or prominent it's use a, of the Irish tricolour. So just, just too yeah, much so, white, orange, and green. I agree. Let's ban the IRA. <laughs> Excuse me. So let, let me get this straight because okay, oh, I I know about this, but I want to put the uh, the other thing in perspective. You have uh, someone like the president of France, okay, that is one of the major powers within the EU. Yep saying that ultimately you cannot protect um, Europe from terrorists. Why? Because we refuse to, damn it. That which is the uh, European... He, he said something of the sort. Result. He said something of the sort. And uh, Thierry Breton is going to come along and say basically that if you say that any kind of country within the EU is not safe, constitutes hate speech, or constitutes harmful content, yeah, to whom? Hang on, hang on. I have actually, I've, I've just thought about this. I endorse this change immensely now. All right, go on. 
Because what is going to happen is if you're telling me the, the prominent use of the Irish tricolor flag or any pro-Irish sentiment is going to be suppressed by the EU. We've been down that road. Good bloody luck trying to deal with the Irish. Because frankly, if they all start you know, doing what they did to us, but to you, but they won't, though. I was going to laugh. The, the, the Irish will to fight is uniquely strong against Anglos. Well, well, if that's the case, they're a bunch of pussies and deserve well, it. Otherwise, the Irish will to fight in the political, like, Sinn Féin uh, circles is just nothing. Because they, they, they're more than happy to allow third world migration into the country. What's well, Gaelic for death to the EU, and that could be the new uh, party. Well, I mean, if you want to give it a try. But the other ones are, of course, go over and find it. gender and sexuality narratives and environment narratives. So those are all going to be things that under this are going to be criminalized. And it goes on to finish here. So legally speaking, the DSA only applies in the EU once inside, inside, uh, installed inside big tech firms. Vast content regulation apparatus will surely affect users in the rest of the world too, which is yeah. something that anybody can see coming whenever legislation like this gets put through. Sorry. What are you doing? Translating the new name of my political party. Uh, go on. Uh, Bastonet. Bastonet? Yeah. That sounds French. Yeah, but apparently Irish is weirdly French sound. Hmm. I think you'll say with an Irish accent. I can't Fair do play. But, you know, this has been yeah. implemented now as of the 25th of August. These large, the, the VLOPs have to take care to abide by all of these new rules and regulations. And as such, with all of the information, and I'm not even going to call it misinformation or disinformation because when it comes to Israel, Palestine, who bloody knows at this point? Really, if you go online, you will get so many different perspectives going around of what it is, and you have the fog of war right now where all of the information is going to be biased in one way or the other. Who knows what's information and disinformation, except for the EU, except for Ursula von der Leyen, who knows exactly what's going on. And this was from a speech today where she was addressing the, uh, the European Union uh, regarding the explosion that happened at the Gaza uh, hospital yeah. that happened last night, I believe. She knows the truth. She knows the truth. She knows the truth. You know, I heard at first that it was by the IDF, and then I heard it was by some kind of Hamas te uh, rebel who decided to bomb his own hospital. Um, I mean, I don't... Sorry to laugh, but what, that's some four lion stuff right there. I mean, maybe. <laughs> we bombed the know. hospital, radicalized the moderates. Yeah, I mean, I the cripples will rise up. <laughs> <laughs> Terminally ill will rise. <laughs> the cancer patients in the... defense. Oh, well, that's a good argument, actually, for suicide. No, I'm not going. No, to no, no, no. Let's not give right. anybody any ideas. Come on. No. Don't want to. Don't wanna escalate the conflict. No. Nope. Yeah, you heard that, and then what did you hear? Well, I just, I just heard that it was one side's fault. Then I heard it was the other side's fault. And who knows? I'm not there. Most of the people reporting on it who are there are going to be on one side or the other and going to have incentives to say it was one side or the other. It's so difficult to be able to tell. Yeah. It's one of the reasons that I try and stay away from talking about these things because at the moment, whatever you say, you know, four or five months down the line, you'll end up looking like an idiot. But Ursula von der Leyen and her cronies, thankfully, have the, they, they've got the good info. They know exactly what's going on. They know everything on the ground because she just says in here, thirdly, uh, we're seeing a rise in anti-Semitic incidents in Europe as a result of all of these conflicts going on. She doesn't specify who's committing these anti-Semitic incidences, so I can only assume it's um, Irishmen. Uh, synagogue, synagogues have been vandalized. Hate speech and fake news are spreading at worrying speed. IRA at work again. I know, and this is something that we simply cannot accept. It's our shared responsibility to make sure that our dark past does not return. Never again! Never again! We have to protect Jewish life in Europe. She didn't shout never again, but it's... The internal German. It's the implication behind all of this, isn't it? No, but I love the idea that you're speaking for the whole EU here, such a broad place. Like you've got the Irish being told that their dark past can't come back. And they're like, we're not even in the war. Yep. Sorry. The neutral countries, they, their dark past as well. The countries that harbored refugees, their dark past as well. Uh, harboring refugees. <laughs> yeah. Let me also say something that in, uh, in Ireland, the particular hate speech laws are particularly bad because they, they're focusing not just on the possession, not just on the dissemination of content that is deemed hateful, but also on the possession, which raises all sorts of other questions. Like, how do you know? Is, these are the sort how, do, how do you know whether I possess hateful content? These are the sorts of laws where it's, if you have a spicy meme on your phone, you can yeah, get arrested. Yeah, that, that's it, exactly it. it. Yeah, It sounds it. ridiculous, but no, that's, that's yeah. ironically the truth. Yeah. 
So you asked why, I remember the other day you asked why I had two phones. And one of the reasons is because it's a travel phone. And obviously you get worried about the foreign country you're going to. That's a good point. Finding stuff. But unironically, you, you have a burner phone for memes. Sincerely, one of the things I'm really worried about is if I go through a British um, airport and the police decide to search my phone, like they're going to find some memes. And then they're not all that fun for them. So that's, that's a good idea to also have a burner phone. I uh, have to go and return some videotapes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, uh, that's something for me to consider after this. Why have you got Pepe memes on videotapes? <laughs> <laughs> the most secure. <laughs> Nobody can go back and re erase my videotapes. They never check the VHS, do they? <laughs> <laughs> You've got Pepe tapes on VHS <laughs> under your bed, don't you, Mr. Robinson? No, no, start sweating. Oh, God. So uh, she carries on. In these years, we have to put the fight against anti-Semitism and all hate crimes at the heart of our action. Thanks to our collective work on the Digital Services Act, let's give ourselves a nice pat on the back for that now, we can weaponize another piece of legislation against our political foes. We now have laws to take down illegal content online and contain the spread of disinformation. And we are now using them for the first time ever. We've already launched an investigation in relation to X, previously known as Twitter. They must comply with the obligation to counter the spread of terrorist propaganda and hate speech. Because in Europe, there is no place and zero tolerance for hate, whether online or in our streets, d depending on the paleness of the skin of the person you're being hateful towards. We've already increased EU funding for the protection of places of worship, such as synagogues. So they're joining in with uh, McDonald's in funding their political allies. And at the beginning of the mandate, we propose to add hate crimes and hate speech to the list of EU crimes. Wait, does this mean that the EU actually is now at odds with the Arab McDonald's branches? Mm. Callum, I'm I'm not sure. I I guess so. Are they going to have to start prescribing McDonald's? I guess we'll see. At the beginning of the mandate, we propose to add hate crimes and hate speech to the list of EU crimes. Of course, that must be sanctioned across uh, at all across our union. Our proposal is still blocked by some member states, but it cannot wait any longer. It's our time now for member states to act and move on. Just do it. Just do it. If you're standing against our laws, just do it. The march of progress is inevitable and always ends up going in the direction that we're already heading in. So you just do it. Do it and forget. This is liberalism. This is progressivism. This is just what we do now. Who cares about having your own standards you apply to ours? And let me just say one thing here, because um, they are trying to claim the status of being a high trust uh, organization. And yeah, a lot I, of the, I trust societies don't have to make speech illegal for the most part. Yeah, so that, that's the issue. And also, when you have high trust societies, you have a failure of vigilance on the part of the people. You need that in order to check power from becoming tyrannical. And one of the first things that, that aspiring tyrants want, want to do is to control information. Do you want to hear my favorite line from this speech? Because this is genuinely Orwellian... War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. I have the impression that I don't want Level to hear it, but also I have no choice. This is going to be... Uh, okay. We must make good on Europe's promise to be united in diversity. Yeah. What else? Incredible. Honestly. United in diversity. Of I what? Want... Diversity of what? Oh, right. John, merch idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's genius. Yeah, there, there we go. We can make some... Thank you, Ursula, because we can make some money off of that one. Yeah, and like I said, and she said in the speech that this is already being used to target Elon Musk and Twitter because the second you get a law like this, what's the first thing it's going to be used for? Why it's going to be targeting your political opponents, people who don't adhere to the same standards that you do because you are all-knowing, you are all-wise, congratulations, you're big brain, you can never do any wrong. So they issued the warning, this, according to this article, but this article is from a, uh, just a week ago now, so this has got some information in here regarding the interaction. Obviously, now that they've launched the investigation into it. Um, so the information, which is supposedly disinformation about the Hamas attack on Israel, was fake news and repurposed old images on X. If Musk, the owner of X, does not comply, he can get his fine of 6% of his revenues from X or a total blackout in the EU. I'd just take that at this point. I just, I just, if I was Elon, I'd just say, well, I don't need the EU. Goodbye. 
Well, John's actually sent me the interaction itself. We managed to find out. I don't know if we can get it on screen. The link. Oh yeah, get it on screen because that'd be that'd be easier. Because what happened is the European Commissioner posted a tweet with a letter being like, "Oh, Elon Musk is letting fake yep. news spread." That's what they're describing in this article. And um, Elon just responded saying, "Oh, hello. Um, just tell us what it is." And then she responds by saying, "Oh, well, we're happy to talk to you in private." And he just responds, "We take our actions in the open. No backroom deals. Please post your concerns." And then she just doesn't. Yeah. So yeah, uh, if I the, the the line that was in the article was um, up to you to demonstrate that you walk the talk. But then he asks her, "Please post it publicly." What you're actually talking about, and she just doesn't. And then she just goes away. I mean, I do love how that's such a put down. I saw you. I'm sure you saw it with Pierre all, all, Polybert, all, Yeah. Is. All I have to do is ask you, can you be clear and transparent about this in public? And they go scurrying off like rats. Silence. Some people would say this. Well, can you name them? Well, no. <laughs> we wasted my time for them. Yeah. Uh, some people also say you've spread disinformation. Can you provide examples of this dis- disinformation and how it's directly related to my actions in any way? Also, who are these people? Yeah. No, I cannot. Can you tell me how it is that you're so sure of yourself that you know exactly what is the correct information in this newly kick-started aggression between Israel and Palestine with all of the information that's coming out of it right now? No, you cannot. But we've passed this law that says we can punish you for it anyway. So that's what we're going to do. Because that's what the modern world is now, is unelected bureaucrats creating legislation that says, screw you. And if you say, for what? They have literally no answer. (laughs) Uh, And and yeah, that's what's going on in Europe at the moment. Um, I hate it, but I'm glad we're not part of the EU. Although we've got our own online safety bill. So it's just an all-out assault on any political dissident. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the premium videos, this one on how we can win the culture war, a speech of the Witten from Carl Benjamin. If you want to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.